Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Ramesh sir. Good evening, sir. Masi, how are you? We are good, sir. Thank you for coming. Oh, nice to see you after a long, long time. So I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are. How was my voice? Okay. Perfect, sir. It's audible. Oh, yeah. Thank you for thank you so much for confirmation. Thank you, sir. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Just uh, well, sir. We'll start once the audience join. We'll start in a while. Okay. Just a few more minutes. As it's Sunday, maybe we are waking up people. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a nine PM here. Oh. It's an odd time for you. Oh, it's okay. The time is no problem. And one good news for St. Joseph's College is uh, our HOD ma'am, Dr. Anupama ma'am, who is talking to you right now. She is awarded State Best Teacher Award. Yes, yes. Uh, afternoon, I got that news from her WhatsApp status. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Congratulations, ma'am, for that great, great achievement. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And sir, listed among world top 2% best scientists, ma'am. Wow. 
Thank you, Masi. Thank you, sir. It's an honor for all of us, sir, to have you. I Thank you so much. It's, many it's, students oh, it's, get inspired. Pleasure is mine. Pleasure is mine. Myself and Dr. Mosi done the PhD the same time in the same institute. And we are neighbors that time. Achha. <laughs> nice, sir. Nice to hear that. Dr. Jyoti Rani, ma'am, you raise your hand. So we have people from uh, various walks of life. Some are uh, students, graduation students, some are PG students, some are research scholars, some are teachers like us. So from throughout India, sir, from various institutes, we have audience. Oh, so that's maybe, great. Yeah, it's taking time for us to reach them. I prepare my presentation to focus on the like undergraduate students and the homemakers who can understand and get some knowledge about nutrition. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Just two more minutes, sir. And we are going live also. The total strength we have got registered are over 300, sir. 380. That is wonderful. Yeah, some are waiting for, uh, I think, YouTube. They want to go there. <laughs> some are viewing over there also. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Sir? Yes, sir? Yes, please. Okay, very good evening, everyone. Welcome to this day three of International Nutrition Webinar 2K23. And today we have with us our guest speaker, Dr. Ramesh Kumar Saini, who is an associate professor from the Department of Crop Sciences, Homkun University. Seoul, Korea. And sir will be speaking about keratinoids, their chemistry, 
health benefits, industrial applications, and future prospectives. So before sir takes over, may I request Mausmi ma'am to please introduce sir to the audience. Over to Mausmi ma'am. Thank you ma'am. A very good evening to all the participants and welcome to the guest speaker, Dr. Ramesh Kumar Saini, who is an associate professor in the Department of Crop Science, Kong University, Seoul, Republic of Korea. And uh, Sir is listed among the world's top two person scientists in the report published by the Stanford University researchers published in 2020. 2020. He's Qualified University Grant Commission, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR, uh, through the net exam, that is eligibility for the JRF and LS in the year 2007. And he is a recipient of postdoctoral research fellowship from Department of Biotechnology, DBT, Government of India in 2014, July. He is serving as an associate editor of Frontiers in Nutrition, which is having an impact factor of 5 and an editorial board member of Foods, which is having an impact factor of 5.2. He published 81 peer-reviewed articles in Thomson Reuters Index Journals with a total impact factor of 459.364. That is really a huge number. He is well known globally for excellent research on nutritionally vital plant bioactive compounds which includes carotenoids, tocopherols and omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. He has done pioneer research to reveal the nutritional potential of Moringa oleifera, which had a great potential to eradicate malnutrition in underdeveloped and developing countries. He reviewed 80 plus articles for international peer-reviewed journals. Sir has done his PhD in biotechnology, MSc in agriculture, molecular biology and biotechnology, BSc Agriculture. With this very brief introduction, I welcome Ramesh sir to take over. And thank you very much, sir. Within a short span of time, you have accepted our invitation amidst your busy, busy schedule. Thank you once again, sir. Over to Ramesh sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Mosami, for this kind introduction and the kind words. I'm glad to. I'm glad that I'm here with this wonderful audience. And I hope that you will get some knowledge from my presentation today. So I start sharing, OK? OK, sir. Yes, sir. Where is the sharing option here? The Google Meet. You'll have down, sir. Fifth one, fifth one icon from uh, in the down, sir. Down bar. Sharing. Yes, Put in sir. now. One arrow is there like this, upward arrow. Okay. Window. You that. And you get entire screen option. You have to select the entire screen option. Yes, yes sir. sir. You are doing it. Your cat is seen. Yes, sir. I'm not getting the presenter view actually. Sir, if you can email, uh, we'll share it for you. Yes, sir, we are able to see it. Yes. Actually, I'm not getting the presenter view, so. We are able to see the entire screen, sir. You're sharing it. Just a second, please. It's okay now? Yes, sir. You, 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 are get, you are getting the full screen, right? Yes, sir. So uh, I'm not getting actually my screen. So if I it is stop between, please text me on WhatsApp. Or if I my call disconnected, please text me on WhatsApp. Issues. Yeah. So I'll start now. Yes. Why? Yes, sir. Yeah. A very good, very good evening to all of you. I'm glad to know that uh, Saint Joseph College for Women's Vishakhapatnam is celebrating the National Nutrition Week to create the awareness about healthy diet habits. Healthy diet habit means we should take the balanced amount of vitamins, minerals, 
and antioxidants which help to which help for our good health and well-being so in this regard today we'll discuss about carotenoids the carotenoids one example is the red color of this tomato plant which giving this attra attractive appearance to this tomato and this attractive ap appearance is due to lycopene uh, carotenoids so today we'll discuss about these fascinating pigments carotenoids their chemistry their health benefits their industrial application and what are the future perspectives we have in this field so when we talk about the balanced diet it include actually fruits vegetable and whole grains they are the source of vitamins minerals and antioxidants antioxidants help to protect from the free radicals in our in our body a significant amount of free radicals are formed due to metabolism and these antioxidants help to neutralize actually to de detoxify that free radicals and protect from various diseases like cancer cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases so among different antioxidant carotenoid is one of them carotenoids was first identified from the carrot and the first identified carotenoid was beta carotene that's why the name was given as a beta carotene because it was identified from the carrot so today we'll discuss about carotenoids beta carotene and their activities so let's have some discussion about the carotenoids carotenoids are versatile in nature they have significant health benefits and because of the significant health benefits they are currently marketed worth 1.5 billion us dollar so before going to the carotenoids let's have some discussion about the plant pigments i can say the natural plant pigment responsible for the coloration of our nature so when we talk about the plant pigments plant pigment can be classified in four major categories like chlorophylls anthocyanins vitalins and carotenoids the, the first class of plant pigment is chlorophyll responsible for the green color of our vegetables especially green leaf vegetables they are very important for the photosynthesis and the generation of oxygen in the photosynthesis the another class of plant pigment is anthocyanin they are water soluble pigments are responsible for the red coloration of pomegranate fruits or like the blue color of your grapes and they are highly they are potent antioxidants and very good for health so we should consume such kind of pigments rich fruits and vegetable every day the another class of plant pigment is the beta lens responsible for the, the red coloration of the beetroot they are also health beneficial and they are water soluble the another class of that, that we are discussing today is the carotenoids so uh, when i uh, i finished my presentation in like 30 minutes of this presentation and i think we uh, will get enough time for you and a session so i would love to answer your more and more questions at the end of this presentation so now we'll discuss about the carotenoids so carotenoids are versatile in the nature carotenoids are found in a significant amount in green leaves but they are not visible because their color is high masked by the chlorophyll during autumn the chlorophyll is degraded and the beautiful color color of carotenoids are revealed in the nature responsible for the beautiful natural colors during the autumn when we talk about the structure of the carotenoid it's a basically hydrocarbon units like this is the structure of lycopene composed of 40 carbon units and which have the conjugated double bonds and because these conjugated double bonds they absorb the light in the visible range visible range means like red yellow and or in that range so it give a beautiful color to our fruits and vegetable so this is a structure of lycopene and lycopene serve as a precursor for the biosynthesis of other carotenoids in the plants 
for example, when the terminal ends of this lycopene cyclized with the help of beta cyclase, it forms the beta carotene. When this enzyme, like hydroxylase enzyme, work on the beta carotene, it forms the zeaxanthin or lutein or many other carotenoids. So in the nature, 1100 carotenoids have been identified. So a significant diversity is existing for the carotenoid because the different functional groups may attest, it may be cyclized, non cyclized, beta cyclized, or extra cyclized. So the significant diversity is existing. These are the source of carotenoids in our diet. So I want to say here, so such kind of carotene which don't have the functional groups are called carotene. So like, like lycopene and beta carotene, which don't have the functional groups like it has here, they're called carotenes. When the functional group is attached, they're called xanthophils. So the green leaf vegetables are the risk source of xanthophils like lutein, zeaxanthin, neoxanthin, pialoxanthin, and also it has carotenes like beta carotene. Pumpkin and carrot are source of beta carotene and alpha carotene. Tomato, as we seen earlier, is source of lycopene. Papers are source of keto carotenoids like capsaicin and capsaicin. Citrus fruits are risk source of beta cryptoxanthin beta cryptoxanthin is also a service it can serve as a vitamin a in our body so that we we'll discuss later among different vegetables in my view the moringa oleifera foliage are the richest source of carotenoids among plants so this moringa oleifera you all of know that is known also also known as a termitic tree or sanjun and it's very popular in South India. We eat uh, domestic uh, fruits, but the foliage also we can eat, and they are a resource of beta carotene and other carotenoids. Among different plants and vegetables, cat fruit is a richer source of carotenoid, which contain more than 10 times lycopene than tomato and four times beta carotene than carrot. And this is traditionally. Uh, used and cultivated in China and Vietnam. So this was uh, the little about the chemistry. Now we'll see what are the functions of these carotenoids in plants and animals. In plants, as we know, that it's a key part of the photosynthetic apparatus, which helps to absorb the light and transfer to the chlorophyll. So it plays a very important role in photosynthesis. And also during photosynthesis, a significant amount of free radicals are formed. And what this carotenoid do? They help to detoxify that free radicals and protect the photosynthetic apparatus. Also, carotenoids play a very important role in cell signaling. They are the precursors of important phytohormones like abscisic acid and strigolactam which play a role in the plant microbe interactions and other activities. And also due to their attractive colors, they attract the pollinators, which help in the pollination. In animals, carotenoids like beta carotene serve as a precursor for vitamin A in our body. Vitamin A means chemically is a retinol. So in beta carotene, when we consume the beta carotene, retinol is formed which play several important role in our body, like in vision, gene transcription, immunofunctions, embryonic development, bone metabolism, and skin and cellular health. So when we consume carotenoids like beta carotene or alpha carotene or beta carotene, it contain beta ion ring, unmodified one. So it any carotenoid contains such kind of structure can convert it to retinol in our body. So in case of beta carotene in our body, beta carotene oxygenase enzyme work on this molecule and it forms two molecules of retinol. And this retinol is nothing actually is a vitamin A. However, if, if any carotenoid has 
attachment to the functional groups like hydroxyl group in case of lutein or zeaxanthin, they cannot serve as a vitamin A. They have other functions which we discuss in the later. So among the carotenoids like beta carotene, alpha carotene or beta cryptoxanthin can serve as a vitamin A and which play a very important role in, in the human body. Here is an example how retinol or vitamin A pops in the vision. So in our, in our rod cells of retina, the cis retinol is present. When it comes in the contact with the light, cis retinol convert to the trans retinol because of the light. And because of the transformation changes, conformation changes, we can see, we can see the objects. You might have seen the red coloration of Inrashim and flamingos. So this red color, red color is also because of the carotenoids. And these animals are not producing the carotenoid. We are, they are getting from the microalgae. Like when the shrimp eat microalgae or phytoplanktons in the sea, that red color, like this astaxanthin, accumulate, accumulate in their body. When the flamingos eat this shrimp, their, that, that color appears in their body. And that color, that beta carotene, the astaxanthin play, vital role in the reproduction and other health. How much vitamin A we should take every day? So the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin A for the women is 700 retinol equivalent. The, the RD of vitamin A is, count, is measured in the retinol equivalent. So we should consume 700 retinol equivalent every day for the women. And this requirement go further during the pregnancy and lactation. The 700 retinol equivalent is equal to almost 8.4 milligram of beta carotene. So to get 8.4 milligram of beta carotene, we should eat at least 80 to 100 gram of carrot or 150 to 200 gram of spinach. So if we consume that amount of this vegetable, we can get the RD of vitamin A. Now we'll see the known pro-vitamin A carotenoids. As we see that like beta carotene serve as a source of vitamin A in our body, but they are the carotenoids which are not serving as a vitamin A. So they're called known pro-vitamin A carotenoids. So we'll see why they are important. So the example of the known vitamin pro A carotenoids is like lycopene or lutein. So this lycopene and lutein cannot be converted to vitamin A, but they are equally important. Why? Lycopene is a very good potent antioxidant, have very significant role in maintaining our health. So they, are, they have a significant commercial values. Similarly, lutein and zeaxanthin accumulate in our retinal of our eyes and helps to filter the blue lights and protect from the UV radiations. So this, for the eye health, the lutein are marketed. As we see, the carotenoids, either it's a vitamin A carotenoids or non-vitamin A, non-provitamin A carotenoids, they are potent antioxidants. What they do? They help to neutralize the free radicals. How? In our cellular metabolism, a significant amount of free radicals are formed, like hydroxyl radicals. And as we know, they are very reactive. They may harm our proteins, they may damage our lipids, they, damage, they may damage our DNA. So, what carotenoids do? Carotenoids have to neutralize these free radicals and convert to non radical products. So ultimately, the, my meaning to say, my meaning is to say that carotenoid helps to detoxify the free radicals form in our body. So this carotenoid may be regenerated with the help of tocopherol or ascorbate. Tocopherol means vitamin E, and ascorbate means vitamin C. So the, in to maintain a good oxidative balance in our body, we should take more significant amount of tocopherol and vitamin C also. We have to regenerate these 
carotenoids. As I said in earlier, that free radicals form in our body, create the oxidative stress, and that oxidative stress give rise to several chronic diseases like cancer, cardiovascular, and neurodegenerative disease. Not only that, there are so many other diseases like diabetes. So this kind of disease occur when the free radicals are formed, more free radicals are formed in our body called oxidative stress. So carotenoid help to balance this oxidative stress and help to minimize these free radicals mediated disease. Like, so when we consume more amount of this antioxidant, it helps to minimize the incidence of cancer, cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. And because of these several health benefits, carotenoids have significant commercial values. Currently, they have the worth market value of 1.5 billion US dollar. And among the carotenoids like capsaicin, astaxanthin, beta carotene, lutein, and other pigments all have play wide, vital role in this work. Currently, 76% of the carotenoids which use commercially are produced in lab, like synthetic carotenoids, because they are not natural carotenoids. They are produced with a chemical reaction and they are produced in the lab. Only 24% of the carotenoids are produced from the natural sources. These are the major market players who produce and market the carotenoids. And carotenoids based supplements are widely used as eye supplements, eye health supplements, like as I said earlier. The carotenoids like lutein and zeaxanthin deposit in our retina eyes and which protect our eyes from the blue light. So carotenoids like lutein and zeaxanthin are marketed as eye health supplements. They play very important in the poultry feed and aquaculture feed. Later, we'll discuss why they're important in poultry feed and aquaculture feed. Similarly, carotenoids are marketed as the dietary supplements, skin health, skin health like in cosmetics. In cosmetics, carotenoids are used, which, which helps to protect from UV light. And also, carotenoids are used as a natural food colorant, like to, to give attractive color to our food candies. So in currently, when we when we make any sweets or dishes in India, we use the food color, and that's not the, that is not natural food color. Actually, synthetic food color. So instead of the, using that synthetic food color, which produced by chemicals, we should use the natural food colors. And saffron is one of the best example, which is widely used in India. The, the color of saffron also a kind of carotenoid, which can be used to give the good color in our dishes and sweets. Here, I, you may be wondering that why carotenoids are used in animal feed. So this is the one of the example when we feed the good amount of carotenoids like lutein to the chickens, it is responsible for the intense yellow or orange coloration of the egg yolk, which is the symbol of good marketing quality. So to maintain the good marketing quality, we need to feed carotenoids to the chickens. And also, it helps to maintain their health and reproduction. Similarly, carotenoids like astaxanthin are used in aquaculture feed. Why? Why they are used in aquaculture feed? Because I like to give an example. When the fish are cultivated in the sea or in the river, they feed the algae and phytoplanktons. That that algae and phytoplanktons contain carotenoids, and that carotenoid accumulate in their skin and give that true color, which is a symbol of their marketing quality. But when you when you grow this fish in your fish tank, if, if the microalgae or phytoplanktons are not available to eat, their color may disappear after some time. So to to maintain that good color, we need to feed carotenoids in with their diet. So this, this has a vital commercial values. Here I like to show the commercial value of the marigold pigments or marigold flowers, which we discard in India so much. 
So here, an example of like 50 to 100 gram of pellet, can, we can expect one or two grams of lutein from 50 to 100 grams of dry marigold flowers. This is a lutein bottle, which has the marketing value of 10 US dollar, like 800 Indian rupees. So from 50 to 100 gram of dry marigold petals, we can isolate the carotenoid worth 800 rupees. So this was about the uh, health benefits of the carotenoids. And now we'll see what are the current, current trends in carotenoid research. So the first trend is agro-industrial waste utilization. In India and other countries, a significant amount of fruit and vegetable waste is produced. For example, when tomato is processed for sauce, ketchup, and other things, a significant amount of tomato pomace is produced. Tomato pomace contains skin and seeds, rich in lycopene. So, the, so many scientists are working to, to isolate the lycopene from this fruit pomace which is discarded and that correct that lycopene can be utilized in food and feed similarly a significant amount of uh, citrus peel is discarded from the citrus processing industry the citrus peel also resource of beta cryptoxanthin which is a pro vitamin a carotenoid and like essential oils so this citrus peel also can be used to isolate these commercially vital carotenoids and other phytochemicals. The another trend is, as we all know, the curved golden rice. Golden rice was created to enhance the intake of vitamin A in the diet. So the general rice that generally doesn't contain the vitamin A like beta carotene. So it was transformed by inserting the foreign genes to produce the vitamin A in a staple, these grains. As we, we know this example, all of we know this one. So in continuation with this golden rice, many, many crops has been produced, which is able to produce vitamin A for the human consumption, like cassava, maize, wheat, canola, banana, carrot, orange, potato, soybean, paper, lettuce, and tomato plant has been genetically engineered to produce the high amount of carotenoid in these plants. And that plant can be used to enhance the intake of carotenoid in our diet. The another trend is to identify the underutilized source of carotenoids. Underutilized source means the source which are not currently known, but they are very rich source. One example is Tinospora cardifolia. The Tinospora berries contain a high amount of lycopene, like 10 times more than tomato. But no one knows about that one. So there's a research is going on to identify, to explore such kind of fruits and vegetables that can be used in diet formulation. Another trend we are working on, the micro encapsulation. Carotenoids are sensitive to the degradation. So the storage stability is the problem. So what we do, we encapsulate inside the polymers, which help to protect from the degradation and it enhance their storage stability and their biological activities. So these are the current trends. Uh, scientists are working on that one. Now I like to explore some future perspectives in carotenoid research, means what we can do in future. So as I said earlier, almost 70% of carotenoids are produced in lab, they are synthetic carotenoids. The only less than 30% of carotenoids are produced from natural sources. But people are aware about the harmful effect of the synthetic carotenoids. So the general public is going towards the natural products so that in the future, the demand for the natural carotenoids will increase. So in the future, what we can do is we can produce more and more carotenoids from the natural source. So we need to develop the novel isolation methods, how we can extract the carotenoid from the natural sources using green, eco-friendly green extraction. So 
super critical fluid extraction is one such technique by using that we can isolate the carotenoid without without using solvent conventionally carotenoids are isolated using solvent like acetone ethanol hexane or like that and that may have the residues in our final products means the solvent residues may be present in the final product and these solvents are harmful for the nature but by using supercritical CO2 extraction, we can isolate this carotenoid, carotenoid without using the solvent. So such kind of uh, methods are under development and we hope that this more research will be required and in the future, this can be used commercially for extraction the carotenoid at an industrial scale. The another future prospect is we can work on that one, the plant waste utilization. Like in India, a significant am amount of floral waste is discarded in the river and they are polluting our river, creating the sustainability problems. As I said, the marigold flowers are a source of beauty. So what we can do is, before discarding to the river, we can use this marigold flower to isolate the lutein, which is a commercial, which has the commercial value. What it can do, it helps to recycle and it helps to maintain the environment sustainability. And also it can generate a significant amount of income. So we can isolate before throwing to the river. We can develop some project so that we can isolate the lutein from the marigold petal instead of throwing to the river. If we, if we, if we have no facility to isolate the catenoid from the this uh, marigold petals, what we can do is just take from the temples and add this marigold petal powder in the chicken diet. This marigold flower petals can be added in the chicken diet and it can help to increase the lutein content in the egg yolk, which is, as, as I said earlier, is a symbol of marketing quality and also it can promote good health. The another the future prospect is we can work is the significant genetic diversity is existing in our genetic resources. Like when we see the tomato, you see here so many varieties or so many types of tomatoes are available. This is just an example. This means a significant genetic diversity is existing in India. What we can do? We can quantify the nutritionally vital constituent in these resources, including carotenoids. And we can suggest which cultivar is the risk source of that phytochemicals. And we can suggest that variety should be used in diet formulation and food fortification. So this was about the carotenoids. Now I come to the summary of this presentation. I like to conclude that the plants are hidden treasures of economically important and health beneficial carotenoids. The global demand for natural carotenoids is increasing, leading to the ample opportunities in the production and marketing. The current research is focused to enhance production of carotenoids with utilizing minimum resources, industrial waste utilization, and green eco-friendly extraction. Considering the health benefits of the carotenoids, the plentiful utilization of carotenoids in the diet should be promoted to minimize the oxidative stress in the body, leading to the protection from chronic diseases like cancer, cardiovascular, and neurodegenerative diseases. Thank you so much for listening. And I would love to ask, I would love to answer your questions. Is questions from the audience? Just like yesterday, you can post in the chat or you can unmute yourself, please. Unmute yourself and you can ask, sir. Just give a moment, sir. Yeah, it's okay. 
sir, before anyone starts, uh, let me just ask you something, sir. Some questions. Like uh, you're saying that uh, there are uh, 74 percent, right? 74 percent of the carotenoids they are synthetic. Yes. Whatever they are using. So is it okay to use them, sir, or they, do they have any side effects? Because already we are consuming them. Yeah, actually, um, we are consuming because the, they have get as a, a safe approval from the uh, from the agencies which we control the production and marketing of the carotenoids. But people are aware that we should use the natural carotenoids. And why they are producing synthetically because of the cost. When you produce the carotenoid at uh, in the using natural sources, it costs more. But when you produce in the lab, they could produce the cost will be less. But in the people like you are aware that synthetic retinoid may not be good or may not be healthy for long in the long run. So people are aware and they are demanding the natural carotenoids. So in the future, the demand for the natural carotenoids may increase. But now if you are if you are consuming consuming the carotenoid, it may be safe for consumption. And is it okay to feed these uh, poultry uh, farm hens and all that much of carotin, sir? Like there is recommended dietary elements. What if they are yeah, yeah. more? Uh, it's a significant amount of research has been done to feed the uh, marigold petals to the poultry. So these marigold petals can be included in, in the chicken diet and it's it's good for their health. And significant research has been done in this area. So there is one question, sir, from Patricia, Michael. Uh, plant flower pigments, do they have therapeutic effects? Plant flower pigments, do they have therapeutic effects? If we say directly, we cannot say that it has the therapeutic effect. Like it cannot, when you have like uh, this disease like cancer or cardiovascular disease, we cannot say that it can eradicate that such kind of disease. It can help to minimize that disease. So uh, we know that uh, uh, these pigments or phytochemicals are antioxidant pigments and it helps to detoxify the free radicals. So it minimizes the incidence of this disease. We cannot say that it can treat that disease. So carotenoids can be cannot be used to treat the cancer. It cannot treat carotenoids cannot treat the cancer. What it can do, it can help to minimize the incidence of cancer. Meaning prevention. Yeah, prevention. Or minimize the damage. Yes, yes. Case. So all these golden crops are available, sir, in the market. We heard a lot about golden rice. Golden rice in actually in India in uh, many in many many countries, the the uh, government the golden crops. Yes, like in case of golden rice, uh, India I think has not approved the commercial cultivation of the golden rice, but many other countries has approved the cultivation and it's under cultivation now. But I think not in India. But other countries has already approved, but I think India has not approved the commercial cultivation of golden rice. And other crops are still in the greenhouse stage or they are not approved for the commercial cultivation. Any reason, sir? Any reason? The reason is because of, as you know, that environmental uh, clearance, people think that it may be harmful. So a lot of uh, research, lot of research and work need to be done before approval. But we think that it may not be harmful for the nature, but still they are not approved in India because of the environmental clearance. Okay. We have seen so many uh, so many news about the BT brinjal or BT crops. Yes, sir. Uh, similar, like, for the, so many people are against genetic engineering crops, like GE crops. Many people are against. That's why it may not be approved. Like we have seen about that golden rice in a movie also, sir. And uh, really, in a movie it is mentioned, sir, actually, about golden rice. Yes, yes, golden rice. Yes, <laughs> golden rice mean. is golden rice is safe for the nature. Actually, like BT may, may have some environmental concern, but golden rice may not have that concern. But it's still, I think in India, they are not commercially yes, allowed for the commercial cultivation. Okay. okay, fortification is allowed, but genetically engineered plants of such things are not allowed. Fortification is common. Like fortification means adding some. Uh, vitamins and minerals in yes, yes. Uh, our daily staple crops is is yes. widely known and used like we have the famous example of using iodine in our salt yes sir. 
So it, uh, it's a long story and it's commonly used in India and other countries. Yes. Certification. There is one question. Does the boil, uh, does the boiling of food, I think? Has any effects on the pigments present in the food? Does it reduce the beneficial antioxidant properties? Yeah, a very good question. Actually, that one. So, when we consume the raw, when you consume the raw fruit or vegetable, or when we consume the boiled or cooked fruits and vegetable, both are different thing. So, I want to tell that when you consume the raw fruits and vegetable, the availability of it, uh, it has the high amount of beta carotene and other carotenoids and other phytochemicals. The raw fruits, the raw fruits may have the high amount of these phytochemicals, but their bioavailability in the body may be less because of non-cooking. Bioavailability means how much vitamin, how much of this nutrient absorbed in our body. Okay, so their bioavailability may be less, but when you cook these fruits and vegetables, some part of the nutrient may degrade like 20% or 30% beta carotene present in the lettuce may degrade during the cooking, but their bioavailability will be more because they have more bioaccessibility. Bioaccessibility means how much nutrient in our body is ready to uptake by the body. And the bioavailability means how much nutrient are absorbed in our body. So when we cook or boil uh, or steam these vegetables and fruits, their bioavailability may increase. Although the content decreases, but bioavailability may increase. So overall, uh, both the things are good. You can eat the fruits and vegetables raw, or you can cook and eat. There is one more question from uh, Ms. Roshni. Good evening, sir. Does heat affect anthocyanin? Yeah, very good evening. Yeah, yeah. all the phytochemicals, when you heat or when you cook, they degrade. Like when you... When you cook your beet, when you cook your uh, any, when you steam or when you cook any fruits and vegetable contain anthocyanin, the some part of the anthocyanin may degrade, like ten percent or twenty percent or thirty percent may degrade. Depends on the. So just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. <coughs> Ma, please unmute, sir. Please unmute, sir. Suddenly you have gone on mute, sir. Oh, I don't know how it's... Yeah. yeah, so I was... Now it is yeah. audible. It's audible, sir. Yeah, so I was telling is that um, when you cook or steam any fruits and vegetables, the phytochemicals degrade. How much degrade depends on the heating temperature or time. But at the same time, their bioavailability Bioavailability means how much body absorb that nutrient increase. So when you cook or uh, when you cook or boil the your fruits and vegetable, they are not affecting overall. Yes, sir. Yes, I hope, Ms. Roshni, it's clear. Anyone else? So there is one more question, Saida. Mahreen Fatima, are there any risks associated with consuming high amounts of carotenoids? Uh, there are not such reports which, which says that uh, consuming high amount of carotenoids may be harmful. But like uh, some cases are there, if, like if you consume more of, amount of carotenoid, your skin tone may change. So when you consume the whole fruits and vegetables, they are not be harmful. For the body, but if you consume like purified carotenoid, like retinol, if you consume in high amount, that may be harmful. So I, I, I repeat again: if you eat the whole fruits and vegetable containing high amount of carotenoid, that may not be harmful if you consume in more amount. But if you consume the purified compound like beta carotene or retinol or lutein, that may be harmful if you consume in more amount. Got it. Sir. So the recommended dietary allowance, recommended dietary allowance of only the, like like beta carotene because it's a source of pro vitamin A. So the RDA is available only for beta carotene, but like in lutein and zeaxanthin, which are not source of beta carotene, their RDA is not available. Is they are not how much we should eat that that guidelines are not available. One more interesting question, sir. Sir, how is cooking 
with an air fryer healthier than frying in oil yeah air fryer actually uh, people are using nowadays uh, i don't it's not related to this topic but i think air fryer means not using the oil and when you you deep fry you use the oil so it's another so another go to like fatty acid so uh, air fryer may be better but uh, depends on the which oil you are using how much you are frying what kind you are frying and that is another topic like you should consult the fatty acid omega 3 fatty acid that topic goes there is asking in terms of nutrients since in both the cooking yeah. methods nutrients are destroyed yeah i think they are different both the methods the significant amount of carotenoid will destroy it this is the method. so i don't think there's any anyone deep frying the carrot they are actually eating or make a curry out of that one i don't think anyone deep frying or stream frying the carrot or tomato they make fry out of it no sir carrot fry Beetroot fry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we then we not we know we don't need to fry that one. We should use raw or steamed one. <laughs> People do lots of frying. Any more questions? Uh, during frying, during frying, actually, uh, instead of uh, all the phytochemicals degrade significantly during frying and cooking and deep frying, and the same time, the significant amount of free radicals. Free radicals are formed in the food, so they are not good for health. So we should limit all the items like deep fried and air fried items. We should minimize the intake of such items for good health. Any more questions? Thank you, Sreya. Deva Habib. Uh, she has a question. Consumption of carotene after. one is diagnosed with myopia really improve their vision can the power of the lens decrease um myopia actually i am not concerned about this clinical significance of that one but the like lutein and zeaxanthin are harmful is sorry it's helpful to minimize the incidence of macular degenerations so macular degeneration it improve after lutein and zeaxanthin supplemented that's why they are marketed with worth billions of dollar lutein and zeaxanthin based eye supplements so we should consume to minimize the incidence of minimize the degradation of our macular macular degeneration but how it can how it can treat the myopia i'm not sure Good evening. Is there any carotenoid that is helpful in diabetes? Yes. See, as I said earlier, this diabetes, diabetes, especially type two diabetes, is because of the chronic uh, inflammation, and that inflammation comes from the oxidative imbalance. When we so because of oxidative imbalance, such type of disease appear like diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular, and neurodegenerative like mental health problems arise because. of the oxi oxidative stress so what we can do to minimize the we should minimize the oxidative stress in the body so if any has the diabetes or so we should in, we should improve the phytochemicals intact like anthocyanin or beta carotene or beta lens and this ca can helps to minimize the free radicals in the body and it can help in such kind of disease like like cancer cardiovascular and diabetes so i cannot say that any particular carotenoid may be helpful all carotenoids are helpful to minimize oxidation or oxidative stress in the body not only carotenoids other phytochemicals like anthocyanin are very good among anthocyanin like very pomegranate is one of the resource of anthocyanin grapes are resource of anthocyanin and that so that we should promote the intake of such kind of fruits in our daily diet any more questions the 
that's it okay so okay so we'll wait and if anyone is asking some more questions we'll get back to you sir yes we'll, please uh, text them to you let me conclude uh, very thank you sir uh, for sparing your valuable time actually when you are, when i am hearing your talk i can see that uh, it's a agriculturist who is very passionate about uh, the pigments mainly carotenoids and uh, your passion is visible sir right from the very first slide you maintain the color <laughs> now i feel like you know whenever you get these flowers let us try them and use them for some purpose let us try to extract you have given the strategies also sir has started with what are carotenoids their antioxidant uh, nature and then he introduced to the beta carotenoids which are the first ones to be isolated uh, you introduced to us the various types of plant pigments sir and uh, one mention is that there are 1100 carotenoids which have been identified till date which is uh, which we really don't know sir uh, and moringa olifera that is the drumstick yes we eat those leaves also sir as we mentioned monaga pappu we say in telugu with the dal yes. we make it and eat they make fry out of it and uh, they give it to pregnant ladies and lactating females it's uh, a part of our tradition and uh, people have to really cling on to it sir uh, and even um, the functions of it like its role in plants to the role in animals mainly our vision will be good immuno functions bone metabolism you have mentioned and then uh, that thing about flamingos the color of flamingos we were thinking that it is naturally that color but uh, this is different to hear really sir first time i'm hearing that uh, from the algae they are getting it that's that's awesome sir the story is awesome and it helps in prevention of cancer decreases the cardiovascular diseases chances and uh, it also helps us to reduce the chance of getting neurodegenerative diseases and the market value is too huge sir 1.5 billion us dollars it's too much and only this uh, synthetic right now synthetic i think if it is naturally people are preparing it uh, the market would double right sir yes 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 sir thank you sir and that uh, current trends you have uh, illustrated the current trends and also shown us the future perspectives and people who are really trying to work uh, in the field of genetic engineering or uh, any solvent extraction in the chemical engineers all of these people they can work with this carotenoids there is a huge scope where you can work from uh, preparing this or developing this uh, extraction methods selection of the richest sources to the extraction methods of carotenoids and uh, usage of uh, carotenoids from the plant waste plant uh, uh, like this uh, flowers uh, flowers are being used for uh, dhup stick making and all incense making and all they do but sir awesome awesome lecture sir really i am feeling like i have to again shift back to <laughs> back my field to this uh, 